Hi, right, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. What I thought we'd do in today's video is talk a little about solar fires or solar ignition. The sun at the moment is absolutely blazing, but the past couple of days we've had a lot of strong winds and heavy rain. So with that being said, the forecast for this afternoon is very similar, then winds are starting to pick up now. The sky itself is starting to get a little bit darker. So I'm just going to take advantage of this bright sun as it is at the moment. I've actually brought a few different sources of magnifying glasses out with me. A few different sources of tinders and also a few things which you can have to use for a bird's nest. So what we're going to do is just see which works best, see which works the easiest and see which works the fastest. So alongside the different lenses which I've actually brought with me today, I've actually brought a few different sources of tinder. I've actually got a little bit of chaga and some amadou. These are just the natural state as they are, you know, once they've been harvested and dried. And then I've actually brought some of the same kind of stuff actually charred. So just in the charring tin here, just a selection of charred amadou and also the chaga. A little bit of uh, charred cloth in there and also a little bit of charred rope, things which you can actually try. And then I've actually just got a bigger can here, again with just with natural stuff in it. Some of the cramp balls which you spoke about just on the natural tinders video which I did. And then out to the fire pit, just a little bit of charcoal. So just having a quick walk around the woods, just trying to find something nice and dry which we could actually use for a tinder bundle. I've actually found a little bit of dry grass here. A bit finer grass, a little bit coarser grass. Now what I've had to do with this is actually just take it from the top of the piles. That way then the wind this morning is actually starting to dry that out quite nicely. So that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Get myself a nice uh, hot coal going in there. And this is the beauty about trying the different kind of tins just to see which works best. And then we can actually get that lit hopefully you know, without too much difficulty. Another thing which I found is a good old uh, fireweed or the uh, rose bay willow herb. Again, you know, this is really tatty. Like I mentioned you know, when I did the, uh, the tinder video, this is the best of what I can actually find it. We just actually strip some of this off and make a little bird's nest or a little tin the bundle out of that. And if needed to, you know, you could actually bring something with you. Things like jute, you know, jute's always an easy one to go up. Something which I do carry from time to time, like I mentioned, you know, if everything was wet like it was this morning, this could be a good option. Or another good option if everything is absolutely saturated is actually just split wood down. Make very, very fine curls. You can actually use that as a little tin the bundle as well. Just whilst I'm waiting for the sun just to show itself, I just made myself just a little tinder bundle there. Nothing fancy, just a little bit of that, uh, that softy or outer grass just in the centre there, with a little bit of coarser grass just at the back. You know, I'm not looking to make any kind of fire today, it's just a case of just showing you, you know, just how easy some of these solar fires can actually be. So now we've just got the sun out, just taking advantage of it quickly. I'm just using just a standard magnifying glass, which I do carry a lot of the time. And I'm also just going to use just a little bit of amadou. And it's just a case of just concentrating that beam. And as you can see there, that started to smoke straight away. I'm just going to rotate it around slightly, just to uh, build up the hot spot. And there it is, that's smoking great now that is. So I'll just take that away there. And you just actually see, just on its own now, that's actually caught. And the beauty about Amadou, you know, you don't need a great deal of it. It does create a lot of heat and it does hold a lot of heat. So I'm just actually just going to fold this one off just like I would do normally. And I'm just going to pop that just into the centre of the tinder bundle here. I'm just going to get this into flame. So with the Amadou, you know, like I mentioned, that's absolutely phenomenal stuff anyway, you know, regardless of how you're going to use it, whether you're going to use it with a ferro rod, flint and steel, or a solar fire, you know, it does create a lot of heat, and, you know, it does get quite a few tinders going. And the magnifying glass itself is quite powerful, so what I thought to do now, I just use just a little Victorian Ox, like I say, around about three times power. We're going to use this, you know, with a cramp ball, or sometimes referred to as a King Alfred cake. I'm just going to cut that open so we can just get into the centre here and I'm expecting you know with the bright sunlight when it does actually come out you know to actually ignite this quite easily. And as you can see there the conical rings you know this stuff you know is bone dry I actually picked these a few weeks ago you know you can actually use these you know with a little bit of moisture in them you know just as long as you can create enough heat just start to dry them out so here we go now we're just going to use it just with this uh, small little magnifying glass here now the sun's just started to come out and just actually see just how long it takes us to get this smoking And 
And as you can see there, that's smoking and that's uh, glowing red hot now. The beauty about these kind of things is, again, you know, very difficult to put out. And if you wanted to, you could just put the other half to it and, uh, you know, that would get most tinders going. And the beauty about these, like I mentioned in the past, you know, they do smoke quite a bit once ignited. So you could have to use these, you know, just keep insects away and the likes if you're starting bothering you, you know, just around camp, things like mosquitoes and uh, little midges and that kind of thing. Now we just transferred that over, you know, as simple as that really. So next time the sun decides to poke its head out, so I'm going to use the larger magnifying glass and a little piece of charcoal. Now I've never had to use charcoal before. It'd be nice if it worked purely for the fact, you know, for anyone that spends a lot of time down in the woods, you know, making quite a few fires, this resource is always at hand. So, you know, using the large magnifying glass is just going to determine if it's going to work or not. You know, if I can't get it to work with a large magnifying glass, you know, I doubt very much I'll be able to use the smaller ones. If the camera will pick that up there, you can actually just see, you know, just how it's changed colour. I've probably spent around about five or ten minutes just to trying to get this go. I'm not sure, probably it's just a little bit, uh, you know, too dense as a material, I'm not quite sure, but, you know, every time you blow it, you know, a little bit of ash comes off. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, I can't uh, actually get this going. Maybe if I lived in a country, you know, with a lot stronger sunlight, you know, admittedly, you know, I am using quite a powerful glass here. So, you know, uh, with the charcoal itself, you know, I'll probably just put that down as a fail. You know, if anyone has actually had to, uh, actually got it going, you know, just please let us know. It's fair to say out of all that stuff that we just tried, just apart from that charcoal, it's all gone up quite easy. So if there was any kind of doubt in your mind, perhaps the diffusion of the sun, perhaps not the strongest magnifying glass in the world, one thing I'd perhaps go over to is using charred materials. Now, like I mentioned, nothing spectacular in here. We've actually got some of the amadou which we tried charred. We could try a little bit of this charred chaga. I'm also going to just try just a little bit of uh, chaga just in its natural state. But one thing which I do carry quite a bit of, you know, and something which we know will go quite easily is charred cloth. One other resource that we do have a lot of is cattails. Now these can be found anywhere along the canal sides, rivers, ditches, lakes and the likes. I actually pick these from work, you know, and we do quite a bit of the clearing. Now these kind of things, you know, you could carry them as they are, you can actually break them down like I've showed you, you can actually char them themselves. But what we're going to do today, like I say, just using it with the solar fire, just by using it with a magnifying glass, we could actually get this going into an ember, break it off, put it in the bird's nest and light it. Or what you can actually do another way is actually just get them going, stab these into the ground. You can actually use these as some kind of insect repellent, they do smoke quite a bit. But then also if you wanted to, you can actually just transport this coal around, you know, these will burn for quite a long time, just by keeping it as it is and just wafting it off through the air. As you can see now, after a few seconds of it being in the sunlight, this is going now. Nice and black there, with that white centre, and if I blow on it, It's cherry red just on the inside there. So like I mentioned, you know, this is the kind of thing that you could carry. This would burn for quite a while. You could actually just stab a few of these into the ground, you know, once they do actually get going, they do smoke quite a bit more. Or we can actually just break some of this off now, just put it into the tinder bundle and just light the fire just by using it this way. And the last thing we're going to use to form a coal is a piece of chaga. Now again, this is a piece of fungus. Absolutely awesome, you know, in the way that it does uh, create an order lot of heat in there. So for marginal tinders and the likes, you know, this is going to be perfect. So what I'm going to use for the tinder bundle. Those of you which may have seen the last video which I did, this is that birch bark which we found what the, uh, the squiddle had stripped off the tree. So we're just going to rip this up. I'm just going to make it into nice fine strips. And this is what we're going to use, you know, for the tinder bundle itself.
Well, that wasn't too bad, just a little bit smoky, and that's what you've got to expect when you're using birch bark. So is it worth carrying a magnifying glass? You know, I've showed you a few different ones here, different sizes, different costs. You know, like I mentioned, you know, perhaps wouldn't carry anything this big down to the fact it's a little bit too fragile. You know, but for carrying a small one, you know, perhaps the thing which comes on your compass or perhaps just a Fresnel lens, you know, I'd definitely say it is. Just as long as you've got a little bit of reliable sunlight, you know, certainly where I am in Britain here, you know, we can't rely on that all the time. You know, so then what you've got to look for is a decent tinder source and then something which you can make a nice little bird's nest out of. Again, you know, using magnifying glasses means that that resource is there forever. You're never going to have to replace this unless you break it. So it's a free way of starting fires just as long as the sun's out. Well that's it for this one guys and like always that just leaves me to say thanks a lot for stopping by and watching the video like always. Until next time, you take care and I'll see you again.